Hi, I'm Nigel, developer of Audisif, with another tutorial. The new version of Logic Pro 10.7 has support for Dolby Atmos, giving the users a chance to mix tracks in this special audio format. It includes the new Dolby Atmos plugin and the 3D object panner. This last one helps to position the sounds in an immersive audio environment. With this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use your trackpad with Audioswift as a touch MIDI controller to quickly manipulate the 3D object panel. This way, the trackpad will help to speed up the mixing process or do some creative evolving automation of the tracks in real time. This tutorial isn't about how Dolby Atmos works. If you are new to immersive audio, I will recommend to watch a tutorial about the basics of Dolby Atmos. There are a couple of subjects you should learn, like surround beds, 3D objects, uh, monitoring formats, and how these signals are routed. I put a link in the description section below. Even if you don't have a multiple output system to take full advantage of a special audio, what we're going to explain here will also work using your headphones. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume you know how to use AudioSwift. AudioSwift for macOS is, is an app that transforms the trackpad into a MIDI controller. We're going to use it to map the parameters of the 3D object panner and change the settings with simple touch gestures on the track. In the description section, I put a link on how to work with the XY mode in AudioSwift, which is the controller mode we're going to use here. With a new or an existing project, go to Mix and click Dolby Atmos. This will take you directly to the project settings window and the audio tab. Go to Special Audio and choose Dolby Atmos. A message will tell the project is going to be converted to 7.1.2 Surround. Click OK and close the windows. Now the Atmos plugin appears in the master track. Open it. If you only have a stereo output system, change the monitoring format to binaural and put your headphones. In this plugin, we'll get a visual representation of the positions of the tracks in a 3D view. If you go to the track, the default panning knob is a surround panner. Right click to change it to the 3D object panner and double click it to open the window. We're going to map the left, right and back front parameters to an XY pad in AudioSwift and the elevation, size and spread to sliders. In this project, I have a percussion track, a clave, and a guitar. In the first track panel, I click the link button. So every time I select a track, the panel windows updates. Open the AudioSwift console window and trackpad windows. In the console, click the yellow star. Select the XY mode, and then view 3. This view has an XY pad in the center of the trackpad and two sliders. The first slider will control the elevation. The XY controls the left, right, and back front section. And the second slider, the size. Choose a MIDI CC number for each controller and change the formats to relative A. We're going to use relative MIDI for the controllers. Let's start mapping the parameters. With the pointer, click and drag the elevation parameter. Press Command L to open the Logic Pro Controller Assignments window. Make sure you're on the expert view. Now Logic is in learn mode and waiting for a MIDI message from AudioSwift. Activate AudioSwift with a four or five finger tap gesture. Touch only the first slider and move the finger vertically. Hit Escape to turn AudioSwift off. The control is mapped, however, we need to manually change three settings. On channel strip, choose selected track. On format, choose sign magnitude. And in mode, choose relative. Close the controller assignments window. Now test the controller. Tap again the trackpad and move the slider. The elevation parameter will move. Let's go with the XY pad. Only enable the X axis for the moment. Click and drag the left right parameter. Press Command L 
activate Audio Swift to send MIDI. Touch the XY pad and move the finger horizontally. Press Escape to turn Audio Swift off. In the Controller Assignment windows, change again the same three settings. Channel Strip to selected tracks, Format to Sign Magnitude, and Mode to Relative. Close the Controller Assignment window. Repeat the same process for the back front parameter, but this time with only the Y axis enabled. Once you map the X, Y pad, enable both X and Y buttons. Activate Audio Swift and test the X, Y pad. The 3D object panel will react. Repeat the same process for the size and spread parameters. With the spread, change the console to view four and use another slider. Use key shortcuts Z, X, period, or comma to jump between view three and four. I already mapped all parameters and I'm going to test the controllers with sounds. Put your headphones on. First, the percussion track. Let's go with the clave track. And now with the guitar. Another way to position the tracks is to use the surround panel. Once you map Audio Swift to the 3D object panel, the parameters of the surround panel will also be mapped. The XY, the elevation. The surround panel doesn't have a size parameter. The spread. You will need to map the center level and the low frequency effect level to other sliders. Audio Swift will work well only in the planner view. However, while using the XY pad, you will notice that sometimes it's difficult to move the position clockwise near the border. It gets stuck for some reason. I'm not sure if this is a logic pro bug or a limitation of how the position is calculated when MIDI is used. A workaround is to move the position closer to the center and then again to the border. Remember you can use audio Swift in mixer mode with logic pro. Have access to the faders solo, mute, and change tracks. Use key shortcuts 1 and 4 to jump between the mixer and the XY mode. If you want to record automation from the 3D object panel, go to the track and change the automation mode to right. Hit play and start moving the controller. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, just let me know. See you next time.